Ladies and gentlemen, CCW continues. We just had lunch, so apologies if we're a little slow and sluggish, but with this much knowledge, this much opportunity to figure out how to take your customer experience function to the next level, we should have no problem getting energetic, no problem jumping right back in, no problem understanding every facet of elevating the context in our operation. Now, if there's someone who has a perspective on that, it's the man who hosted the CCW Excellence Awards, someone who had a front row seat to the very best in the business, the best technology providers, the best employees, the best leaders, the best overall contact centers. And that man is Dan Berkman from Five9. Dan, how's everything going? It's great. Glad to be here at CCW this week. I was thrilled and honored to host the CCW Award celebration last evening, and it was just wonderful to see all the customers and technology providers and really the innovators that are helping lead and reshape our industry. And it's, it's interesting because this area is one that often gets taken for granted in businesses. You know, I think that we know we have to have a customer service function. We know we have to interact with customers. And so to be able to actually recognize those who go above and beyond, who innovate, who are trying to not just be the necessary evil, but be the true driver of value, that had to be special for you. It sure was. And that was precisely why uh, hosting the award ceremony was so special is because we were able to really call out not just enterprises, but it was really businesses of all sizes. We had small businesses, large enterprises, BPOs, technology solution providers, and each of them that were awarded uh, really stood out and differentiated themselves in, in a way uh, that set them apart from their peers and really allowed us to recognize and see that they're delivering a customer experience that's very unique. And it's really part of the whole digital transformation that we see taking place. You mentioned that our industry hasn't always gotten the accolades for, for that because it's been a necessary component of most businesses. What has changed is the fact that uh, historically, we've been a cost center and really a, a necessary part of the business. Today, it's becoming more and more strategic for organizations where they see added value in being able to bring a personalized customer experience, which results in customer loyalty and results in them sharing that experience and, and giving them a brand that people want to gravitate towards, which is very important in today's world. Now, we've all heard the term digital transformation. Yeah. It's a buzzword in the space. Everyone, however, may not have the exact same definition. Everyone may not be approaching it from the same mindset. I know this was part of your speech last night. You mentioned it here. When you say digital transformation, what are you talking about? Yeah, so that's an excellent question because it is a somewhat overused term, and it really does apply well outside the contact center because it's really about businesses that are taking their overall operation and bringing it to the cloud and, and allowing and enabling the new technologies to be adapted into their environment and be able to leverage things like, and we hear AI and machine learning and NLP and lots of buzzwords and lots of acronyms, but what the first step in contact center in order to, to take advantage and, and really achieve the digital transformation is to move the contact center to the cloud, uh, your routing technology and your workflow engine, as well as your CRM to the cloud. That's kind of the prerequisite. Once you get both of those in the cloud, uh, it then allows you to innovate and bring on these additional applications uh, that will bring real tangible results uh, back to the contact center. I think that's, the way you frame that is perfect because again, you could be a technology provider pitching a product that does all those things. But I think what you're focusing on is creating an instrument for transformation, an instrument for connecting with your customers. You're doing this, you're bringing your contact center to the cloud for a reason. You're incorporating digital channels for a reason. You're making routing more intelligent for a reason, not because the technology exists, but because your customers have a clear need that you can fulfill with that. That's, that's exactly right, Brian. So if you think about it, today a lot of contact centers uh, aren't clear on how they're, gonna, how they're gonna take advantage and implement AI. It's coming from all directions. It's coming with many different use cases. And what's interesting is we do know that the first step is to get those two items, uh, the CRM and the contact center infrastructure into the cloud and really work with customers on the use cases that will bring them tangible, measurable ROI. And it, you don't want to just implement AI for the sake of implementing AI uh, because there's very different use cases. And what we're trying to achieve with our customers is to work closely with them and find areas that you can start simply 
and be able to see some results and then build on it from there. And what we achieve, what we strive for as a technology provider is to, is to bring those practical use cases that are repeatable, that we can sell to many customers, not just custom one-off projects, um, which are certainly doable and are certainly viable, but those are typically going to be for uh, very large investments and ones that aren't necessarily repeatable across many customers. So I appreciate you giving me an opening there by talking about repeatable cases because, you know, a lot of times when you talk to vendors in the space, they don't want to give any blanket answers because they want to really emphasize the customization. But clearly you've identified some common challenges organizations are facing, some common opportunities to use automation or to use technology to move one step ahead. Right. So what would some of those be? Yeah, so one great example is if you just think about assisting agents and making them more empowered to be able to deliver that personalized service. I'll give you an example. If you and I are having a real-time conversation and you're the consumer and I'm the agent, um, by having this, the system transcribe our conversation in real time and then be able to apply an NLP, a natural language processing, against that text, the system can understand what we're talking about and the topic that is of relevance and let the system go search the databases, which may be many. There's knowledge database, there's CRM database, there's a lot of different areas that it could be searching. And then it can come back with recommended responses to the agent and say, you know, here's your response. So the agent the entire time can focus on a real conversation with the customer as opposed to a superficial conversation while they're feverishly searching and looking for an answer. So let the system search for the answer, let the agent focus on the consumer, and then let the agent get assistance from the system. And that's really one of the first and most basic uh, implementations that we see that will definitely uh, take hold in the contact center. Now, I could ask you what today's customers want, but we all know the answer. It really is everything. I mean, because on the one hand, we know they want easy, low effort experiences, but we also know they want them to be very personalized. They want them to be tailored to who they are and what they're trying to achieve. They want you to understand their intent. And then to go one step further, they also want it to be really fast. You know, speed, while we may not want to always advocate for average handle time in every case, speed definitely is important to customers. So how do you kind of navigate that balance where it has to be easy, fast, but also very connection oriented? Yes, indeed, speed does matter and it will always matter. Um, but we've also got to make sure that we give thorough and personalized service. And so by having a system, not a person, a single person can look for a single answer serially through many different places, right? They may go to a knowledge database, they may then go to a CRM database, they then may go to a collection database to find the information that they're looking for to serve that customer. Whereas the system can do all those simultaneously. So if I can send the system off to search and find those tasks and come back with the answers, I can accomplish a lot more in a very short period of time compared to the human doing that themselves. What are the big bottlenecks you're seeing? I mean, we spent last night celebrating all the great things contact centers are doing. But not every, others are facing challenges, they're struggling. What are some of those common operational issues you're experiencing? Right, well, I'll, I'll answer that in two, two ways. The first way is when we talk about AI and the reason why it's gonna take several years for the adoption to really take place in the mainstream. And one of the reasons is the, the simple example that I just described to you actually incorporates several different technologies. You have a transcription engine, which could be from a variety of different companies that do that. The IBM Watsons, the Salesforce Einsteins, and, and many others. Um, and then you've got the NLP. Every, there's many different NLP engines. You've got to select the one that's going to give you the most robust searching. Then you've got a search engine that needs to be able to integrate to typically a, a variety of different data sources that a customer has, which no two customers are going to have the same setup. So there is customization involved and professional services involved. And then you've got to teach the system and have it learn over time. So those are all things that take maintenance and take work uh, to make this happen. It's not a plug and play type application. That's what I think we're going to, I won't say struggle, but be challenged with on delivering it for mainstream. Um, it will come, but it will come over time over the next several years. What I think today's environment is struggling with is how do I get true, personalized, uh, unique uh, engagements for every interaction in the manual in the manual method that we've all had in the past. I can collect certain information through an IVR. I can ask for certain items to derive intent and help me with routing. But if I really want to go to the next step, what companies are struggling with is how do I get more and more and more, and more intelligent 
and be able to really do a matching between consumer and agent so that I optimize that match each and every time. And that's what I think is, is one thing that, A, it's a big challenge today, but B, I think it's going to be met and achieved when we get these technologies incorporated. And that sort of ties into what I'm referring to as the omni-moment experience. The idea that, yeah, we know channels have to be connected. That's old news. Now it's how are you deriving the most possible value at each time? And the matching that you're describing there is exactly it. Whether it's a system, a self-service tool, or an agent talking to that customer, they need to be the right resource for that customer at that given moment, or you're not going to deliver the optimal experience. Right. And it really comes down to data. It comes down to the history and data. So I want to know when you interact with me, um, I want to know your preferences, whether it's channel preference or just preferences in general about a variety of different things. So I need to have that stored in my database to know what are your personal preferences about how you want to be treated or how you want to be handled as a customer. I also want to be able to look at history of your buying behavior or your servicing behavior and so forth. Um, who served you in the past and how successful were those interactions um, so that I can, and the journey that you took to get here to this, to this point, you may have a frustration already built up that I can know about before that conversation begins. If I can assess all those items and all those elements, I then can make a much more intelligent decision about who to match you up with. Now, as we kind of reach the end of our discussion, you know, we, mm -hmm. again, you hosted the awards. Those who weren't there or those who maybe were enjoying the wine a little too much or <laughs> those who were spending too much time laughing at Paul, what would you say was maybe the commonality, the secret ingredient that the winners yeah. have shared that those can go and start to apply in their own organization? Excellent. And, and, and to, to point out what you said very eloquently, this was a celebration and that was the best part of it. It was really to celebrate the successes of, of the folks that were in that room. And I think they took that away from the, from the show itself. What I found the common element across the board is these are all thought leaders. Uh, regardless of, again, the size or type of organization. They all are thought leaders. They all have the creativity and the wherewithal to experiment and and innovate in areas that others aren't so much able to do that. And so I, I ask them each to be risk risk takers and continue to be risk takers because they end up setting the, the, the table and really setting the bar higher and higher for everyone else to follow. And that's how they differentiate and set the bar for the industry. It comes down to how you engage agents. It might come down to a technology platform you implement. Maybe you measure things a different way. The point is thinking about that outcome and how you're going to go about it just a little bit differently and a little bit more emphatically than everyone else out there. That, I believe, I agree with you, is exactly what they shared. Yep. These are people who are hungry. They've been here for years. That's right. Maybe they got honorable mention two years ago. Now they're in the winner's circle because they said, we're doing the right thing but we haven't done all the right things yet, so let's keep taking those risks and let's keep getting there. That, that's right, and, and you know, historically we've seen, and we, a natural um, assumption is that we assume that large companies have the wherewithal and the, and the deep pockets in which to, to innovate. However, they oftentimes uh, can't innovate as fast as some of the smaller, more nimble companies that may not have the deep pockets, but have the ability to move quicker and adopt new technologies faster. And um, so it really does run the gamut. And that's why I'm, I'm excited that uh, CCW took the opportunity to recognize uh, large, medium and small companies and how they're each innovating independently. And now finally, you're here on behalf of Five9. So there's a lot of providers in the room. There's a lot of great end user organizations in the room. We have a Shark Tank cast member in the room. <laughs> how do you, how are you standing out? You know, what do you want that message to be that people are going to be remembering so that they're thinking about five nine next week and next year when they're trying to elevate their organizations? Yeah, thank you. Well, we're trying to make sure that we serve our customers in the best fashion, best manner we can. And if you think about that, what we're trying to do is make sure that we have a platform that's always on. The key with any contact center infrastructure environment is that we have the the maximum uh, reliability and uptime in the industry. And we've proven that uh, time and time again. We publish that on our trust site. Uh, and that's the first step. You have to keep the platform up and running at all times. Secondly, I'll say innovating. 
being able to bring new solutions to our customers. And a big part of that isn't just 5.9 bringing the solutions ourselves uh, with our innovations, but being able to partner with an ecosystem that has a lot of the ancillary and, and uh, complementary applications that we spoke of earlier on how to innovate. And by building an open platform with APIs and SDKs that customers and partners can leverage, it allows us to stretch and extend our solution set much broader beyond just what the 5.9 platform does. And then I'll say a third thing, and that is our AI initiatives and being able to really look for how we're going to implement our recent announcement of our, our summer 18 release uh, allows us to now have an AI engine that can bring in a lot of these products that customers are looking and testing and doing proofs of concepts with right now as we speak. And we think that'll help propel us and continue our growth. Today we're achieving uh, a 38% uh, year over year subscription revenue growth in our enterprise uh, customer base, which, you know, 5.9's been around for, for 16 years. And if you think about it, our customer base has now grown to where 75% is enterprise. And that portion of our business is growing at 38%, as I mentioned. Yeah, so I mean, it sounds like your goal here is to fit into your client's narrative, fit into their objective, find a way to come up with a complete picture of tools that makes it work for them, not just say, how can we make them tolerate our platform? Absolutely. Yeah, to tolerating a platform is not the term I would ever use. <laughs> it's uh, leveraging our platform to enhance their business and really help run their business. And the key there is... Um, being tightly integrated with the the certainly the the Salesforce, Oracle, Zendesk, Microsoft, Skype for Business, ServiceNow, the key uh, CRM platforms that are out there today, as well as build the connectors and APIs to be able to integrate uh, to a homegrown or a vertical application um, solution that they might have. But those two solutions working hand in hand is what will help deliver a great customer experience. Well, Dan, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for helping us with last night's celebration. It truly is an honor to have you here. It's truly great to see how your company has evolved and yet remain consistent in its mission to really help such a crucial part of every organization. Excellent. We look forward to it and we look forward to being here for many years to come. Thanks to CCW. Definitely. And for CCW Digital, this has been Brian Cantor, still here enjoying the Mirage, still here enjoying the 19th Customer Contact Week. We're here live at the Mirage in Las Vegas for the premier, the leading, the definitive customer contact event series, CCW. We have a veteran attendee with us. He's spoken, he's attended, he's asked questions, he's advised. He's Terry Lang from Comerica. We're absolutely thrilled to have you joining us today. Thanks, Brian. Good to be back here again. So how's the event been going so far? We're almost at the end. What's it been like? Uh, it's really been a great event this year from the keynote speaker, from Barbara Corcoran as a keynote speaker, the new technology that's playing out in here. It's really great to see all of the people and all the technology. So I know that, you know, maybe more so than some attendees, you really do focus on opportunities to learn new technologies. It's not just, I think, the motivational, cultural, inspiring stuff. You really want to be able to take action and solve those challenges. So what have been some of the technologies you've been looking at this year? Well, it's interesting because over the last two years, I've put together a roadmap for technology change at my center. And this year, we're actually implementing $10 million worth of changes from vendors that I found here at this site and through relationships I've made here. So we're going to moving to a cloud-based telephony platform. We're moving to voice biometrics, where before we were doing manual authentication. I'm changing my quality measurements and installing speech analytics, natural speech IVR, robotic process automation, AI is probably my next step in getting involved with that and getting it customer facing. So you mentioned you had a roadmap, so this isn't just, oh wow, shiny new toy. There's a real journey, there's a real strategy behind the technology. So what changes, what outcomes are you looking to start to see now that you have this budget and now that you actually have the execution in place? We had to do something transformative for customer service. Our customers are, are on the waning age cycle and we're really looking to attract a fresher customer, a younger customer to our, our bank. Um, and also we're actively trying to move from a, a capital expense to an operational expense model. So lifting all of our services from on-prem to cloud was very important to us as well. That flexibility I think is absolutely huge because 
things change. You know, we've, we've seen this all the time. I mean, we've spoken for the last several years. It's, our, it's a vastly different landscape just in a few years. And so being able to, I think, understand that change and make sure that you're constantly connecting with customers amid that change is so valuable to an organization like yours or really any organization. It, it absolutely is, and, and especially in my space, in the financial services space, with the economic conditions getting a little bit better now, we've got a little more technology spend dollars available, and quite frankly, my space is really trying to do some catch-up. Now, one of the areas, you know, obviously you're here, you're not just meeting with vendors, you're also talking to fellow attendees, people who are leading their own customer contact operations. What do you see as maybe their key themes, their key talking points this year? What is the average contact center leader looking to accomplish? Uh, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of discussions about cost, um, the legacy costs, the license costs, all of those types of things. People are really looking for a way to streamline costs without streamlining service and see how they can transform their business. Yeah, and I think what's brilliant about that and what's exciting is I think people are finally understanding, and I've said this a lot on this interview series, I've been saying it a lot here, that bad customer service is costly. So whereas in the past maybe you're like, can, do I have the budget? Can I spend money on this new technology that might improve my experience? Now it's like, if I don't, I'm going to be sinking costs into a bad experience. I'm going to do damaging relationships. I'm going to have my agent spending time on complaints or, or recurring issues that shouldn't be recurring issues rather than having them building connections that drive value. Oh, absolutely. There's no question about it that customer expectation is at an all-time high regardless of it being in the contact center channel, just that retail experience, it, the expectation is so much higher from customers. And also you have to think about the agent's role in that as well. I think it's twofold. I mean, obviously you have, if they have bottlenecks on the back end, if they run into challenges, that's going to hurt their ability to impress the customer. You also have to think that those bottlenecks hurt their own satisfaction with your organization. And if you lose agents, you lose the knowledge. You also add a recruiting and training cost to your organization. Uh, no question about it. My Texas center, where there's a lot of contact centers uh, within a 25-mile radius, absolutely these agents that are coming in, they want it, they're expecting higher technology environments. They're expecting the ease. They're expecting a lot of things that some, you know, some employers really can't provide for them. So exactly, the degree of competition is customers are asking businesses to compete on the experience to win their loyalty. Agents have the power to ask them to compete on the agent experience to win their buy-in for the long haul. Oh, absolutely. And, and where an agent used to leave for, for an extra you know, quarter and move across the street to a different contact center, if you've got a better experience for that agent, you can keep them around a whole lot longer. And that's exactly it. I mean, we do research, obviously, with CCW Digital, and when we ask them what are top agent complaints, what are top sources of frustration, what are top causes of attrition, it's more often than not, the tools don't work. The workspace is uninviting. You know, they can't get the job done more than it is, oh, there aren't enough pizza parties or there's not, the pay isn't good. I think pay, obviously, yes, everyone wants to make money. We all get that. But on a day in, day out basis, you already know your salary. You're not, that's not going to change your daily satisfaction. What may change your daily satisfaction is the idea that each day, you know, your business is working just a little bit harder to make your life just a little bit easier and more productive. I couldn't agree more. Now, what do you do in terms of, you know, obviously you do what you're emphasizing speech analytics, you're reaching out to your customer base, you're trying to understand what's going to attract that new generation of customer that you want. What do you do in terms of listening to your agents? You know, how do you kind of understand, not just by looking at their numbers, but really looking at their sentiment, whether you're getting the job done for them or not? Uh, we've, we've actually brought in a few people to help us with change management. So we've now have an, we actively have agents involved through the purchasing cycle, through the deployment cycle, through the value realization afterwards and making sure that we're getting that. We want that agent involved from the moment we decide to jump off into a new, uh, into a new space. Now, we've talked a lot in the past and there's been different challenges over time. Is there anything that you feel like you have accomplished, that you have, you set a goal for your organization, you set a vision for your customer experience, and now you feel like you're there so you're truly ready to start focusing on the future? Anything that's kind of been conquered? It, it, absolutely. Um, we have just launched um, a new, we've moved away from a, your traditional press one, press two, DTMF type of IVR. We now have stood up our first instance of that natural speech IVR. And our agents are feeling that from our customers that it really has been a transformative experience. 
And are you now using that IVR to truly solve problems? Is it more about authentication or qualification? I mean, obviously, I think a natural speech recognition-based system is going to help, but how does it contribute to the overall journey for the customer? In, in the last uh, 12 months, we've been able to double the number of self-service opportunities that we have for customers in this natural speech IVR. Customers can get to it much easier. They have their, their problems solved quicker. And when it comes to the agent, the agent knows that it's something that only they can solve and it's a value for them to be talking to that customer. And how are you preparing agents for that reality? Because, you know, I, I think we often say, oh, of course, agents want to handle the nuanced, complex issues. Of course, they want a little bit less predictability, a little, little bit less issues rooted just in frustration with the journey. But they, that's what they've historically focused on, right? I mean, agents have historically answered transactional questions based on the script. So now that they do have the opportunity to connect with customers on a more meaningful level, how do you make sure they're ready for that? Well, we made an active uh, decision that we were going to start hiring a different agent. We're, we were looking now for agents that have that customer service experience, have some technical acumen so that they can navigate through several systems. They really have to be better thinking agents instead, like you said, of having to do those scripts as they did in the past. Just as you know, we talked about years ago, the call center transition from cost center to value center, suddenly the call center had to put its money where its mouth was and really drive that value. I think it's the same idea with agents right now in that they want the more complex work. They want the more interesting stuff to do. But in order to do that, they're going to have to step up. And I think they're going to need their organization to partner with them to make sure to and help them step up. Absolutely. And, and as you start to make those cost decisions, uh, when you start to install the new technology, part of that cost spend has to be in, in rewarding your agents for this more complex work. And for the right way to handle it. You know, you can't be rewarding based on metrics that don't affect that meaningful connection. You've got to get to uh, customer satisfaction uh, did did you present the the uh, next best offer correctly? Was there a realization of that sales or service opportunity? And the, exactly, and everything you said there is fairly objective. You know, it's not like oh, suddenly you need to look at all these subjective things and there's no way to measure performance. Everything you said there is objective in the sense that you know whether the, the agent did it or not. They're going to be able to understand whether they did it or not. You also just, and this is what's more important, know that it really worked for your customer. It's what they really want. And if it's what they really want, it's what your agents really need to believe and want to deliver. Yeah, we're no longer interpreting what that customer wants through the old whack-a-mole five, five reviews per agent per month. It really is pointed. We're looking for compliance, obviously, in our traditional QC, but now it is moving towards what does that customer tell us that this agent's doing for them or with them? Yeah, and it's also reading between the lines, too, and that's where the analytics technology that you're looking at is certainly going to help because, you know, customers will say things, but they what they're going to say is often conditioned on what they know about the experience, what they've heard about the experience, what they understand the experience to be. It's not always based on what they really in an ideal world would want. And now that there's so much emphasis on the customer experience, so much emphasis on really elevating the journey for customers, it's time to start really thinking about what they would want in an ideal world and how you can deliver it. Yeah, and we also just started to move into surveys on the back of our all of our customer experience as well. So we have anything from one to five questions very simple survey depending on whether you stayed in the IVR, did you dump out to an agent, was it a sales call, a service call, all of those types of things will flex which of those five questions you get, but it's very simple, very quick. Makes perfect sense. Well, I want to thank you very much, Terry. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. It's always a pleasure to see you at this event. I think when we have people like with your approach to the customer experience, your vision for the contact center here, that's what's allowing this event to continue growing. That's what's allowing people to go back to their office and feel like this was the experience they were looking for. This did put them on the right path. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Brian. It's great to see you again. And I, I can't wait to see contact center week next year. Definitely. And it's going to keep getting better. So make sure you join us next year or join us for either the fall or winter iteration. But for CCW, this has been Brian Cantor, thrilled to be reporting live from the Mirage in Las Vegas. 